Mayori Saxena is one of the 30,000 ALS patients who would benefit from the bipartisan bill, which would help people like her get access to potentially life-saving treatments. Joining me now is Mayori and Mayank Saxena. Now, she is unable to speak, but her brother is here to speak on her behalf. Um, Mayank, let me ask you some about your sister's struggle and why you think this bill would actually help her. Yeah, hi there, Dina. Thanks for having us on. Um, her struggle has been really frustrating to watch uh, because we had learned about in a disease that has 100 percent fatality right now, we had learned about some promising treatments a few years ago that might have benefited her, and we were quite simply unable to access it because it was not available to her via expanded access uh, and the current right to try laws at that time which is the reason uh, 8662 in the House and 4867 in the Senate would solve those problems so that people like Mayuri and others like her could have access to potentially life-saving treatments, uh, you know, as soon. Because back then, she wasn't in the condition what you're seeing her right now, which is on a ventilator and 100 percent paralyzed, unable to speak, but just move her eyes like Stephen Hawking's. Yeah. I know that she has, um, I, get, I think, two master's degrees. She was 32 years old, living in New York City. She had her whole life in front of her. Um, can you tell me about the what you need changed in terms of the current right to try law is not good enough? No, the, the, the current right to try laws, um, it was very good in their intent, but these bills are trying to marry the humanity of the right to try laws with the research of the FDA. Um, Quite simply put, the right to try laws were basically sidestepping the FDA in the hopes that it would make it easier for people like my sister to access these drugs. But what ended up happening is that the phar big pharmaceutical companies or any pharmaceutical companies didn't have any type of financial interest in you know developing drugs for a mm. population that has neuro rare in uh, neurodegenerative diseases like ALS. There's not a lot of fiscal mm. sense for them to invest in that. So it was hard to even access those types of drugs or treatments that were even in trials back then. So what this is, is this is not just a treatment bill, it's actually a research bill. So it's providing more data to the FDA and also to researchers, to a population that normally wouldn't be served by the existing biopharmas. And it would be a win-win to provide them more data to the researchers and to provide a very small population right. that's quite overlooked with so access these to treatment. Bills these bills are up for passing. Um, and just like the, we have 30 seconds, I would love to know, like, are you frustrated to watch your sister try so hard every day and then to feel like Congress isn't holding up its end of the bargain? Yes, it is extremely uh, frustrating. You know, Congress has the ability to give hopes to, you know, thousands of Americans that are suffering from ALS and other rare neurodegenerative yeah. diseases yeah. right now. And they can pass this in the House. We have enough co-sponsors to pass this, and we're asking yeah. them and send. Yeah. Well, we'll, to... we'll keep an eye on it, Mayank. Thank you so yeah, much. And Mayori, you keep, you keep at it, girl. Thank you so much. And thanks for Thank joining us, everyone. I'm Dana Perino. I'll see you on The Five.